G'day guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now today, I'm going to talk about the AFL Trade Week. I initially was gonna make a video on Ben Brown, but then there was a few other teams that I thought I should chuck in as well. I don't think I'll be touching on every team, but I'll be touching on the most obvious uh, news stories that came out of Trade Week. Now I'm gonna go straight into Ben Brown. Um, when the Ben Brown trade started getting talked about on social media and whatnot, I was a little bit disappointed. Can you believe that? Can you believe a man who watches his team kick long to Bailey Fritch and Tom McDonald got a little bit disappointed when Ben Brown was talked about joining the club? I was looking at Ben Brown going, geez, he's a bit one dimensional. I think he's a bit of a, uh, <laughs> he's a bit of a liability. But then again, what other key forward isn't? Like Tom Lynch isn't crumbing like Cyril Rioli, if we're gonna be honest. But yeah, my view of Ben Brown was he was a bit one dimensional. And um, a part of me went, I'd sort of rather two meter Peter. <laughs> a part of me went, geez, I'd sort of rather Paddy McCartan. Cause I was thinking of our age of our team. Now our 22 year olds were drafted in the similar drafts that Peter Wright and Paddy McCartan were in. So I was like, that would be a full circle moment having one of those key forwards join our team. Which is so dumb, because neither of them have established themselves in the AFL, but Ben Brown has. But I watched some Ben Brown highlights and it got me going. It got me going something chronic. Just having a 200 centimetre size key forward there helps so massively. So I am really excited that Ben Brown's joining the club. I'm really optimistic. I, you know, it's this time of year. This is when the Melbourne Football Club supporters are best on. It's your November and December when you really start getting sucked right in. And I was watching some Ben Brown interviews and he was saying that he's got his body right. He had surgery middle of the year, but he's basically been training since. And when pre-season comes around, he'll be fit and firing. And oh my God, I just started thinking, 26 or 27, he's coming into the best age bracket for his career. And my mind just started wandering wild. Uh, started, you know, picturing David Neitz type impact that the Ben Brown machine could have. I am excited, I am excited, and I feel silly for not being excited at the start. I'm not sure where my head was at, but uh, welcome to the club, Ben Brown. I guess I'll touch on one of my all-time favorites, Mitchie Hannon, he's gone. He's done a Nick Hind, who's done something similar. Um, Mitch Hannon played all his footy at Footscray, all his VFL footy, and then got drafted from there to us. And he is so handy. He is the best, like, opportunistic snag kicker I've ever seen, and can take a hanger. That just ticks favourite player of McDonald's bracket so comprehensively. And Nick Hind, he he played all his VFL at, um, at Essendon, went to the Saints for a year or two, probably a similar time length that Hannon went and now he's gone back to, to the Don. So, moral of the story, don't pick VFL players <laughs> out that aren't at your club. Geelong are an interesting one in trade week. Now, I'm the biggest Geelong basher, but I can't bash um, the players that they got. They're all stars. They are all stars. Isaac Smith is an absolute jet. I was hoping that we'd get him. Sean Higgins is a jet. He had his career best year, maybe not this year, but the year before, I reckon he made all Australian top 10 in the brown though. And then Jeremy Cameron, he's, you know, talk about age bracket and coming into the prime of your life. He's, uh, he's hitting his straps nicely. So they've got three superstar players, but I guess like there's no point getting a first round draft pick for the Cats. There's no point having three first round draft picks. Um, you'd rather Sean Higgins and Jeremy Cameron than an 18 year old that's probably not gonna play. So I do understand it but it just reeks of a bit of now or never for the Cats. And I don't see why it couldn't be now or never. They've um, you know, been really consistent over the last four or five years. I don't think in any season I've gone, they are the best. Like they finished first last year and they were probably the fifth best team. They finished top four this year and they, they did look threatening, but you still had them below like your, your Tigers, Lions. Yeah, it just feels like one of those years. I, I, I do look at them and go, geez, they, they look lethal. But are they going to be lethal? I guess time will tell. I think the Blues did pretty well in the trade. I think, um, yeah, pick eight for essentially Saad and Williams was was very nifty stuff. I didn't think that they'd make the top eight next year. Like, at the end of this year, I just thought they're a young side that probably got the best out of themselves this year. The shorter quarters and the shorter season helps young legs. And I thought they pinched games and were in games this year, given it was a shorter game. And maybe that's not true and I am a nuffy, and <laughs> I don't know, but that was my hunch. And I just felt like if the season was a 22, 23 round, 20 minute quarter season next year, which I'm not sure it will be, I just wasn't sure whether they'd be caught out a little bit. But adding Williams and Saad, that's, that's exciting. Yeah, maybe I do change my mind, maybe they do make the eight. North, I reckon, did really well. Like they are, it's, it's the most obvious rebuild of a rebuild. They probably should have pulled the trigger a year ago, but I think 
they did look like they were on the rise a couple of years ago. Um, so there was no point like getting rid of your Goldies and Higgins and um, your Benny Browns because they probably thought that they were coming up. I don't think losing Higgins and Brown is that big of a loss. I think I was a bit worried about their depth when they got rid of your Pittards, Marley Williams. I was a bit worried about depth when that happened, but when I saw them lose Brown and Higgins, I was like, well, that's fair enough. Like, Nick Larky is an absolute jet, and apparently they got some up-and-comers anyway in the key forward stocks. And Sean Higgins is good, but it opens up another spot for another young gun in the midfield, so I wasn't too rattled when I saw that. I was a bit worried about who they'd get in, but Stevenson, what a steal. Jaden Stevenson, they got him for bargain basement. I cannot believe, like Jaden Stevenson just screams Collingwood player to me. And I can't believe that he will not be a Collingwood player and he won't be remembered as a Collingwood player. Jaden Stevenson, when his career's done, will be a North player. Like that is so weird. The Bulldogs did so well. I personally think they should have let Dunkley go. It sucks. But I think holding them there is a bit weird. Like, I know they have a contract and I understand why they do hold them there. Knowing that he's walking around the corridors going, oh, I didn't really want to be here. I don't like that. So I'm a big believer if, if they put their hand up and want to go, it sucks, but you've got to get rid of him. Not sure he's worth two first round draft picks, even though he's contracted. To get him, Mitchie Hannon, I think they needed a play like that. Everyone kept clowning me. He couldn't get a game at Melbourne, any shit. He's a gun. Mitch Hannon is a gun. He'll be so handy in that forward line. Uh, a ruckman, which they needed. I think Tim English will do majority of the rucking, but Stefan Martin, certainly handy. And then to get Adam Trelaw, holy fuck, the guy averaged 30 touches at the Pies. What, he's 27? That That's prime time Adam Trelaw. Holy cow, that's impressive. That is very impressive. So the Bulldogs, I thought they were going to be another bang average team, but that might be something that um, lifts them up. I thought the Bombers did pretty well. I thought the Bombers were quite impressive. Two meter Peter, my man that I wanted at the days over Ben Brown, I think is going to be a really handy acquisition. Uh, they got Nicky Hind back in the VFL. Um, I remember the highlights of him kicking snags for fun in the finals at Port Melbourne. So I still feel like, yeah, Joey Danaher out. Arazio out. I, I, I do feel like it's a bit of a bottoming out sort of zone for the Bombers. I don't. I think they're going down before they go up, but they've got three top 10 draft picks and I think only two or three teams in the last 10 years have ever done that. That's exciting. That's really exciting. And it's gonna be a fresh start, new coach, um, getting a few players out, few players in. Sometimes that's all you need as a club. Um, sitting around the middle can sometimes be worse than going down for a couple of years. So I think, yeah, they, they might bob down, but I think that's exciting for the club. Like, you, you, it feels fresher, it feels better. A new era. Uh, a couple of honorable mentions. I thought the power were very good. Alir Alir, he is so handy. And Arazio Fantasia is very, very good as well. Two handy gets. Uh, the Saints, I want to give a bit of a shout out to. They've got Butler and Higgins. That is a lethal forward line. And Higgins can go through the middle too, so. Um, very, very impressed with the Sainers again. That's it for me shout outs and me honorable mentions. I'm gonna go in to the pies now. Um, that is crazy. I cannot believe what they've done. It's either gonna be the start of an era where teams do this. Like it's gonna get cutthroat American sport style. This is how we deal with plot. Like this is just how it's done. Or this is a bit of a one-off and a bit of a dark day in football history. The lack of communication with the players, like Stevenson and Trelaw have both come out and said, I wasn't really, like this sort of blindsided me a little bit. Didn't really make too much sense. I think what's really confusing is Ned Guy the other night on Fox Footy said the salary cap thing's a bit of a blow up. Like he just wants to rejuvenate the list. I can't believe you're getting rid of a 21 year old that won the rising star and a very, very good B plus, if not A grade mid. If it was salary cap, it's like, oh, you know, that's very shit and poorly managed, but something had to give. But to come out and say that, yeah, the, the salary cap was a bit of a beat up, it makes you go, well, what's the reason then? Then there's stories about Steve-O wasn't contacted by the club. Trelaw said in an interview today, he was told by Bucks that a group of players didn't want him there. Yeah, I'm, I reckon the Pies are in some strife. Like, I think, I don't know, it feels like one of those cultural things that could just disrupt the fabric of a football club. So I've got a few conspiracies. One, they, they were over their salary cap in real strife and they had to get rid of some players. Second theory is it was a bit of a salary cap issue, but also a bit of list rejuvenation which is what Ned Guy said. And 
they just back in their young players. Like, they have a absolute crop and a half coming through. Uh, the Brown brothers, they have massive hopes for Tyler Brown in particular. Yeah, you got your Quainers, you got your Dacosses that are coming through. They've got Sire, they've got Maynard. They've got all these players sitting on the pine and, and, and sort of like up and coming, knocking the door down that they can't really give a game at the moment. And maybe they back those young players in over like a Trelaw and a Stevenson. And maybe the price of these young players that could play every week um, yeah, maybe that's the reason they got rid of them. Or the third conspiracy, <laughs> and it's my favourite, and I've seen it bandied around a little bit. I think Stephen Silvani chucked it up on Trade Radio, said maybe they're getting rid of players because they're going after someone in the next few years. They're going to get a bit of a war chest and throw the absolute kitchen sink at a free agent coming out. I don't know. I think it could be a mixture of all. Anyway, guys, that's it for my... My very in-depth, very professional uh, trade recap. Um, sorry if I missed anything or missed any team or missed any trades. But yeah, that's just yeah how I saw Trade Week. I love Trade Radio. It was so much fun to listen to. I think the lads smashed it. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Comment down below and I'll be interacting with the chat. I love talking trades and talking footy. So yeah, comment down below in the comments and... Um, yeah, we'll shoot the shit over what happened over trade week. And yeah, I appreciate all the support and I'll see you guys very, very soon. Cheers.